Hey guys, real quick before we start the video, I want to direct you to the community tab on my channel. I am currently running an event for you, the viewers, to rate every single Monster Hunter Monster from 1 to 5 stars. This project is going to be a bit of a run back from the 20th anniversary popularity poll and is meant to allow everyone to voice their opinion on every monster, so we can get a big picture look at how the whole community feels about the entire Monster Hunter bestiary. There will be a new poll on the community tab every single day at noon Eastern Standard Time and all polls will remain live on the channel, so you can answer any of them at any time you will not miss out if you miss the poll for the day. I will be updating numbers all the way from now until the end of October when the last polls have been run, and in October or November, we're going to have a massive video event where your comments will be read, all the numbers will be crunched, and the monsters will be reordered based on how you all voted. Every vote on every poll matters, and anyone has a chance to have their comment read in the video itself. And if you want to help me get more data and reach the broader Monster Hunter community, I'd appreciate a like on this video and, you know, maybe hit the subscribe button to help this channel grow. It'll put me and this project in front of more more eyes. Okay, no more YouTuber CTA shilling. Here's the video you actually clicked on. Thank you. Well, hello there, and good morning. I apologize for the uh, asmr -y type of voice at the moment, but I don't live alone, and everyone else in the house is asleep, so you're getting quiet morning radio, Connor, today. Thankfully, I am quite the night owl, and being the weirdo that I am, was up to a nice, lovely game of Civ Five this evening. I say evening, it is 4.30 in the morning, when, lo and behold, a couple of new Monster Hunter Wilds videos came out, so I watched them over. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what they've showcased, and I think it warrants covering these, um, because I do have some legitimate thoughts, a couple of fears that I had were alleviated, and we have a little bit more insights and generally just a slightly better idea of what this game is going to look like just being played. So we're going to go over what was showcased. We're going to talk about it a little bit in this nice, relaxing voice of mine. So let's start with focus mode. Uh, this being the first video that they posted, and this being the most interesting to me, one of the components of Monster Hunter Wilds I was a little nervous about, because this was being advertised as this new feature that would be tied into the wounding mechanic and the special attacks mechanic, and it was marketed as a tool to help players guide their attacks and hit the monsters where they want to hit the monsters. So there was a fear I had, most given to me because of a video that uh, Ratatosker did that this might be a Souls-esque lock-on camera which I really did not want for Wilds but from what we're seeing that very much doesn't seem to be the case and not only that um, but it has some interesting changes for weapon positioning uh, that at the moment I think I like so let's go over this and just let the video play. Alright, so off the bat, you might overlook this a little bit like the first time you watch it, but with focus mode being activated, I'm sure it'll be tied to holding down probably one of the triggers or something, is the turning radius that you now have access to while you are in the midst of an attack, a charge, or a combo. So this is a lot more directional control with our moves than we ever really had. So say you're lining up, like we see here, a greatsword hit, or they'll show in a little bit of sword and shield combo, and the monster moves from where it was going to, and you're going to whiff on that weak point you were targeting. Or it starts to move, you're in mid-combo, and you want to kind of follow its movement as it's moving. It's holding the focus mode, which is the sword at that angle. Readies up the charge, and spins full 180, brings the sword down. So that's pretty new, and that's pretty big. And I don't think that, not that I can think of, I don't think that really breaks anything. I don't think that's anything that's super drastic. It is a nice little fix of a recalculation if you're gonna whiff a big hit. If you misread an input, you know, it's not gonna warp you to the monster or anything. It's not going to, like, delay your charge more than anything or delay your moves, but, you know, you just need to move a couple feet to the left or to the right or spin around when you're charging. Then you can reposition and you can hit that hit. So this is something... 
I think at the moment I really like. I think this is a good change. Yeah, so slightly different context this time, looking at a sword and shield combo as Tetsukabra comes, or Tetsukabra, uh, Chatakabra, comes up and around and goes past your hunter. So you whirl around as he's moving and redirect your combo into him. Yeah, so this, I like this. I think this is a good change. I'll run it back one more time just to watch like the full thing of it. It gives you a nice quick turnaround after uh, that slide. Then you get to whip around, go into the combo, turn a little bit like angly shelf a little bit. So we got at the arms instead. Doesn't delay anything, doesn't teleport, doesn't uh, give you any free hits, but the monster moves a little bit. You get a little bit of extra movement in the midst of your combo to uh, recorrect yourself and recalibrate for certain things. So good change, I think. Alright, so now we see the wounding mechanic coming into play with the big red gash right above his leg. So this, we'll have to see, we'll have to get like the exact specifics, but this is a very non-specific part of Chatacabra's body. So it's right above the back knee. So it's not on the leg, it's not on the forearm, it's not on the back, it's not on the head, it's not on any like particularly overt weak points or breakable part something that you would normally be targeting so it seems to me that the weak points will materialize within reason pretty much anywhere where you're getting enough damage on so right on the flank there on the back legs on the so on you like your your obvious weak points non-obvious weak points i'm sure there's some degree of limitation but um it looks like the wounds can be created just kind of all over the body giving you access to these uh focus attacks so you do enough damage and you lacerate the body and it's pretty good looking i think this looks way 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 better than tenderized body that you got from the clutch claw this looks much more natural it's much less distracting it's not covering up the monster in a bunch of just gray cracked gunk everywhere it's a it's a scar you know it's a lot of white tear on the flesh and the big red imprint this looks significantly better in my opinion. So then if you proc focus mode, once you get the weak point, you then get red scout flies indicating where the weak point is created. And I think this will also go for general weak points that already existed on the monster's body, as we'll see in a little bit. Um, this is fine. It's little video game particle effects. I don't really feel too strongly one way or the other about this. I don't think this really hurts or hinders anything. Um, like, a, it's a little video gamey. I don't think it's 100% needed that you have red sparkles around it. I don't think this ruins anything. So something to point out with the font and or not um, something to point out with the usage of UI is the little tick marks around the outside of the 68 on the left side of your screen. Uh, so that is the same type of UI they would use for hits against a tenderized part. This is e essentially confirmation uh, that the clutch claw has been replaced. This is how we're doing clutch claw now. This is how we're doing the creation of weak points on a monster's body now. We're doing it through repeated damage to a set space on the monster, creating a wound, a laceration, and then targeting the wound that we created. This appears to be much, much, much more natural, much more earned, much less spammy, much less video gamey, much less of a mandatory thing to be played around and built into builds. It's probably going to still be enormously important to create these wounds, but now it's no longer going to be, you know, throw on a temporal mantle, grapple to the monster, create the weak point, hop off, throw it around a little bit, get agitator up and going, have your weakness exploit going. 
so that you get the buffs on everything and you don't you'll have like less of a extremely homogenized um play style and build style so i think in taking tenderizing and making it much more skill-based much more naturalistic much less gimmicky this i think is absolutely the proper direction to take this type of idea so i am how they are laying this out how they have changed the clutch claw and everything i absolutely approve of so yeah i talked about this a little bit going into focus mode will highlights the monster's pre-existing weak points again not something i need not something that i think is terrible just to kind of add on to that a little bit you know um there's something to just learning where the weak points are and manually understanding and gaining knowledge about a monster i mean to be fair it's like the head is always going to be weak the wings are typically always going to be weak. The tail's typically always going to be weak. Like, it's the forelimbs usually sometimes, depending on your monster. It's not like I don't know where the weak points are probably going to be, but I, I, I feel like this is just, it's something that I don't need, and I think it's something that kind of video game eyes is it a little bit. Does it do damage? No, and it seems entirely optional, but I think it's, it's a little bit of gamification that I don't think is necessary. <laughs> So we got a little bit of a look at Charge Blade and Longsword there, and probably their focus attacks. So, or that, I think that might have been Gunlance, rather. Gunlance and Longsword? Let me wind that back. Longsword's got a big, okay. Okay, so big, like, double vertical strike. And yeah, that's Gunlance. So is that, oh, I think that's Wormstake. Have they brought Wormstake back? Oh, Ruricon's gonna be pissed about that. Uh, let me run that back twice. Yes, you got a big stance right there. Boom, boom, double hit. That's kind of cool. Okay, so are they bringing... Interesting. It looks like they're bringing back Wormstake, but on the focus attack so that you can actually put it in the monster this time. <laughs> Because Wormstake was always a pretty um, neat idea that just sucked to implement but if they're doing it through the focus strikes and they're giving you like an actual avenue to bring it back maybe it won't be stupid in this game <laughs> let's run that back one more time that's a really cool stance for longsword too and and it's not a counter it's not a counter it's just normal attacks also that longsword looks really cool simple but really cool it's not a counter guys it's just normal attacks <laughs> I think the gun lance also looked really sick. Yeah, look at that shield. That shield's awesome. Is this just like the starting? Like the start. I assume this is just like the starting classification of weapons. And if so, the art design is already really good, dude. It's really good already. Yep, that's definitely. Yep. Okay. Special attacks that deal extra damage to wounds and weak points. Okay, so now the next question I have off of this is, it says it can do it to wounds and weak points. So do you need to, can you just get it off of weak points for free? Because I think that's definitely too easy. How much can you use these? Are they on a cooldown? How fast are wounds going to develop? Like this looks really cool. I think this feature looks pretty sick. So now it's just a matter of like, how fast am I going to be ripping these off? And how easy am I going to be ripping these off? I think is my next question and the fact that it says you deal extra damage to wounds and weak points like i said does that mean that a, a, a spot doesn't necessarily have to be a wounded area for me to hit it just a weak point i feel like that's probably not true but that's that's worded very oddly but the attacks look really cool so you go into focus mode you have yeah so you can see right here he has the wound right under his jaw you can see the red cut on his lip like i was saying earlier it seems like you can just kind of put these scars borderline anywhere on the body which from a from a programming sense i think is very impressive Okay, yeah, so let me wind that back a little bit. We'll take it nice and slow again. Because I think you could see that there were scars all over his body. Yeah, so you see him on his, they're on both of his limbs right there. And this one, it's on that limb, it's on his chin, it's on his shoulder, and it's on his other limb. So he's got four on there right now that I can count. Okay. 
And then he goes in and he drags. Okay, so yeah, this tells me that you can create a lot of these scars at the same time. They're not terribly big. So you know, if you're going to land your focus strike, you got to really kind of get into it and get at that wound that you created. The wound's going to be small. You can have multiple of them at a time. So a big question is going to be how fast do you make them? How diligent do you have to be to make them? Uh, if it's too quick, because this guy's got four of them on him. Granted, this is a, this is a tech demo type of thing, but uh, how quick is making those wounds going to be? And then how powerful are the focus attacks going to be? And how quickly can the focus attacks be used and can the same wound be focus attacked multiple times so these are all i think very simple next questions that need to be asked about this system that seems to be the big one you pop off for the heavy bow gun okay so that is the focus mode stuff. It's not a lock on camera, thank goodness. Uh, the wounding looks really good. It looks like it is a replacement of tenderizing, which is fantastic. The dynamic nature of the scarring is very impressive to me. I have questions about how often and how powerful the focus strikes can be used and how strong they are. I think that's a perfectly valid question. Hopefully they're not too, too overtuned and too, too spammable. The, the four focus strikes that we saw all look really cool. The highlighted weak points are a little gamified, but I don't think they necessarily damage anything. And this seems to be very optional mode to use for that purpose. And I think that the ability to reposition in the middle of a charge or a combo is a generally very good change. So I'm liking focus mode. I'm liking it. I think this is so far a pretty good addition to Monster Hunter. I know that a lot of people are kind of wary about the implementation of big gimmicks and whatnot, but the and I think that's very valid. The only thing that again looks very gamey is the highlighted weak points, and that is probably the least effectual part of this. Everything else looks fairly naturalistic. The ability to shift your body when you're doing your combos, the ability to create wounds and scarring on a monster, the ability to exploit that weak point that you manually created with effort, get a big attack off, that looks naturalistic, that looks earned. So in terms of this, if this is like the big gimmick of Wilds, it's somewhat subtle and doesn't seem too intrusive and there is some grounds for it to be a little bit broken but we will we'll have to see but on the whole i think focus mode looks good so we're gonna cover the the stuff about the basics and the stuff about the greatsword that's the stuff that i have a little bit less to speak about because some of it's pretty rudimentary stuff but we'll cover that stuff real quick all right, so this is your general basics that everybody knows. Sheathing and unsheathing and movement speed. Nothing really to read into there. You get a little bit of an aura when you're drinking a potion. I think that's whatever. It's a particle effect. Yep, this is all rudimentary stuff. The shoulder barge is remaining. That looks a little different. I don't remember my greatsword perfectly, but that little, like, uh, round slash combo finisher at least the animation looks a little different so here's the other thing i've been thinking about what might potentially be broken is the sacred or secret i like this guy i do i think he's a charming little lad but there's a couple of things he can do that do look pretty powerful one of it being the ability to snatch you up onto his back i definitely want to know what like iframes for that are going to look like because that's exploitable then we kind of have a wirefall situation again. If there's no iframes, then that's not a problem. Uh, the other thing we'll be talking about in a second is the usage of items. So we'll be seeing that in a bit. Uh, all right, so we're going to start with this part first, actually. This is another thing I don't love, is that tracking seems to, tracking was something that could have been so interesting in worlds and they kind of diminished it with the scout flies and then rise pretty much did away with it completely and it seems like we're kind of in a situation again where monster tracking has just been completely uh diminished unfortunately as your sacred has basically just a homing sense for your quest targets i'm really not a fan of that 
at all. I would very much... I, I kind of get it. I kind of get it because the maps are going to be so big now that manually tracking down a monster like that, it might it might be something you, that this is just a compromise that needs to be made. But man, the, the potential of like the tracks and the trackings and the droppings and everything that were left in the world, it was such a cool idea that was never maximized, was compromised by the scout flies. And now it just it just seems to be going the opposite direction. It's it's kind of like going away again. And that makes me sad. But again, the scale of this game, it might just have to be a necessary evil, maybe. And if that's the case, I can I can begrudgingly concede. But man, I, I'd love a Monster Hunter game where you just kind of got to get in there and you just got to track. You know, that's what, um, that's what memorizing monster territories and patrols is supposed to be used for. Maybe this is something that you can switch off. It, if, if it is something you can switch off, then I might just manually do away with it and hunt like normal. But we'll see. And this is interesting. So this is our first look at our mini-map. I'm finally starting to get like some stuff about UI. Uh, this is a nice thing about these little videos. It's giving our first look at just the game up and moving. So they do a cool thing with the mini-map where it'll kind of tilt and it'll show the levels of verticality that it has, which I think is a really cool thing that it can do. Also has your grabbable items out and around, shows base camp, shows slinger ammo, shows uh, resource points, mushrooms. So yeah, let's take a closer look at the mini map while it's moving. Let's watch down in the corner. And you can even see just kind of like how the different uh, things on different layers are shifting and changing uh, and the dimensions are altering. So it's showing you what is at different elevations, which is really cool for a minimap. And for a game like this, I think a very good call. So I'll watch it move as the secret comes up. Nabs you. Yeah, just watching the dynamic shifting of the dimensions on there. looks really cool in action and motion like that. Another thing that's particularly interesting is that it looks like just seeing down there that we have zone numbers, which was something I wasn't sure we were going to have just by how broad and naturalistic and ungamified the zone and locale design seem to be in this game. But there we have like a big one right there. So it seems like we do have designated battle zones, which is good for like call outs and whatnot. Uh, but it's something I was just a little bit surprised about. All right, so this is the other thing we kind of have to talk about with the secret, being able to use items when you're moving on them. So this is something that the Palamutes introduced, and it was a really, really powerful ability because you could just hop on your dog and you can heal and sharpen and just kind of stay out of range of the monsters and just kite around them, not get hit and do your items. It was really, really strong. I did it a lot. With secret here, they only show you being able to heal and sharpen at his very slow walking speed. No confirmation if this is the only speed you can do this at. If that's the case, though, that's probably a good thing because it negates how powerful that this is as a tool to use your items and avoid the dangers of item consumption. So if you're if you're locked to that walking pace, that's good. I think that would be a good thing. That would be very much preferable. I'm not necessarily gonna get my hopes up that that's the case, but this is that is what I would prefer. Grabbing items on the back of your mount is something that we also got from Palamutes and the Tail Raider system, so that's not surprising whatsoever. Weapon swapping already seemed to be implied to be exclusively on the back, so that's no shock to me. Uh, 
I'm very happy to see this gizmo come back. I think the Slinger was one of the best things that World brought to the table. It is a great multi-tool with a lot of excellent utility, lots of things that it could do. But the only thing I'm seeing not coming back is Wedge Beetles, which seems to be probably completely replaced by the verticality that the Secret has. So I'm assuming Wedge Beetles are not in this game, which is okay. I mean, I do like those things quite a bit. But yeah, no, this is a really, really cool multi-tool that allowed for better aiming of items. The usage of Slinger Ammo was really cool and how uh, varied that could be. I'm interested to see if there's new Slinger Ammo types, you know, that you can grab them off the ground. They'll show those off a little bit, but uh, very, very happy that this device came back. I just gotta say, that ammo just looks awesome. Like, I'm wondering, what, what does that even do? Like, is that crystal burst? Like, that's sick looking. So it still deploys tools, it still f deploys ammo. Notice that the deployment of the flash pod seems to be pretty much the monster just has to be in the light you know uh way back when you had to hit him in the face with the flashbangs now it's they just kind of have to like see the light effect probably a little bit more realistic that way but you know a little bit easier to pop off yeah so now we also have the hook slinger you got an item on your pathway you want to grab uh, you don't have to go deviate and go grab that item. You just can snag it with a shot. Makes gathering a little bit easier, a little bit more convenient, as, at least on probably stuff like plants and mushrooms and whatnot. I doubt this will work with ore. little bit of extra UI look at over here telling you what you're about to grab which uh, makes sense if you're on the move like that I guess that's perfectly fine so yeah those are your basics hoping that the sacred isn't too OP this is the only thing I'm really kind of looking at this I'm like okay like what's your movement speed what's your iframes and stuff like that uh, really glad the slingers back everything else looks perfectly fine so then real quick we'll get take a look at greatsword and we'll uh, head out for the night yeah, so this looks to be just your starter greatsword. Like I was saying earlier, the art design for the weapons is already looking really good. So as long as we ain't got the bits on sticks, looks like we're redeeming that part of the world. So it looks like we're pretty much back to good old world greatsword. They really don't seem to have added too much of anything. Someone who's like really, really versed in greatsword, you can tell me if something looks noticeably different, but we have our true charge back. We have our charge, well, I say back, Where? when did it leave? It's true charge, your charge hits, shoulder barge is sticking around. The combo ender might be a little bit different looking. It seems to be good old, like world greatsword which i think is my favorite incarnation of the weapon and does away with a lot of the really over the top you know, like no more <laughs> no more strong arm stance thank god i will say the sheathing of it seems to be a lot quicker uh it seems to just be a lot more fluid and a lot more agile so you go back and just like look at this string of movements right here the fluidity of everything moving so him going from his charge hit to his back roll to his sheath to his unsheath very very fluid it seems like the greatsword might have a good deal less end lag than it used to at least on certain attacks let me run that back one more time just to really get a good feel for like the pacing the fluidity here yeah i mean she seems considerably more fluid. I like that. I would, in some previous games, I would imagine that's like quick sheath level of sheathing speed for a great sword. Like that by itself is very much catching my attention. But um, yeah, no, she just seems to move a lot more nimble. Not so much the attacks, but just like the movement around the attacks seems a lot more graceful.
It's interesting to me. Yeah, and the animations seem a little bit different with some of those attacks. But like that whole like that whole slew of uh, movements that was just taken. Very responsive, very fluid, very quick. And that's like your big focus counterattack into the... I know it's not like uh, <laughs> this for everything, but that's like Frontier running right into a follow-up hit. That's super cool. Uh, I've talked about this one before, but this seems to be a parry rather than a counter for the Greatsword. Yeah. And uh, parries are better than counters because parries require skill and can be whiffed. Um, so it definitely seems like you are reading into an oncoming attack and then hitting it with the uppercut, knocking the monster away, and then go charging in and getting your retali uh, retaliation strike. Yeah, that's definitely a parry and not a counter. Thank you goodness because that's so much more appealing to me that's so much more skillful to me because it doesn't you notice he the attack doesn't hit the hunter and the then there's like a ping animation and sound effect and then like attack goes off he's like no nope, you got to read that strike and then uppercut into that strike and if you whiff you're gonna get bonked very much prefer that that's your new big focus attack which is a really cool big drag move And that's your power guard. Still not entirely sure how that's going to work. That seems to be... I heard that there's going to be like a sneak attack thing, so you can get like a big hit if uh, you catch a monster unaware. I think that's what that was right there. The other cool thing about this, and I'll round it back just to like watch for the sake of it, but this is a really good look at just like the game playing, the fight going, and also like Doshaguma up and fighting. I did a video recently talking about how cool I think some of the monsters in Wilds are looking and how kind of different they look conventionally on like an artistic level. But just seeing Dosha like up and fighting and throwing hands, like, nah, dude, that's a monster hunter monster. He's just like more burly and ugly. Like this dude's freaking cool. Let's just run it back and just watch them fight and get a good feel for like what combat in this game might really start to look like and then we'll wrap it up and head out. Yeah, man, I believe him so much more as a monster hunter creature, just seeing him up and fighting and throwing and biting and taking great sword hits. Like, that context really does a lot of good for him, I think. I think he looks great. I think Greatsword looks good. Definitely a lot more fluid, a lot more nimble, a lot more quick, but still like big and meaty and chunky and powerful. That parry uppercut looks like a ton of fun. I'm definitely going to be very interested in Greatsword in this game. Just for like that extra um, bit of fluidity to it that it seems to have. You know, maybe that's quick sheet that they have attached to like a playtest build or something like that just to make like the footage look better. Could be totally wrong, but man, he, he, she was schmoovin', dude. So I'm interested. I'm very interested. Uh, so yeah, that is our surprise buckshot of Wilds videos that we got at four o'clock in the morning. I am encouraged. I think focus mode looks good. I think greatsword looks great. Just like a couple little bit of tune-ups from World, which was already a great incarnation. I still do have some concerns about the spammability of focus attacks and uh, how much of a get out of jail option the sacred are going to ha be. Uh, but that'll be something to test when the demo comes out and uh, that'll be something to recommend or have my fears abated then. You know, we are just now beginning to see what this game looks 
looks like in actual real moment to moment gameplay. This is something I've been very, very hungry for for a long time. See just like what the actual meat and potatoes of the gameplay is going to look like. Uh, and I think this was a particularly encouraging first look. Uh, so far, I think this game looks to handle very well. I don't think it looks particularly cluttered with gimmicks. I think the weapons look like they're moving well. The super attacks look really cool and not too gimmicky. Uh, the focus mode does not look to be too handholdy, a little gamey. There's a couple of things here that I think are a little gamey, and that might just be a boomerism. But, you know, I still, you know, I, I still want the game to have its challenges, to have its stuff where you have manually accrued knowledge. But nothing here looks like it is going to be a me, 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 use me over and over and over and over and over and over and over again mechanic that just hogs up your build bandwidth and your gameplay bandwidth and your uh, game loop bandwidth over and over and over again, except for the wounding, which seems to be a very naturally introduced and a very sensible and non-gamified method of creating weak points and opportunities and capitalizing on those opportunities, which I think is the best way to do a gimmick like that. So I'm encouraged by this. I think we're seeing some really good steps in the right direction. And I think the developers have made some very good calls in introducing new ideas without them becoming horribly overbearing. So let me know what you thought about all this down below. And if you want to see me talking about Wilds more, like I said earlier, I got a video where I discussed how cool I think the upcoming monsters in Wilds look. So if you want to check out more of my stuff, you can go right there. As for now, though, this has been CR Volcanic or Connor. I'll see you around. Shout out to all the patrons and special shout out to... Nihilist Chimerax, Dat Boy Doin De Ding, Sir Newt Newt, Peaberry, Stefan Conneen, Shaggy Grizzly, Psychotic Jester, Peco Plush, Daniel Delasarte, and Call Sign Shadow. Thank you very much, everyone.